I think my only role was to just get, answer the question I was asked, which is how did we come to do this book? Um, I, I n actually never met Lenore, although we talked on the phone a number of times beginning in the early 70s. Uh, the book uh, was an idea, I think first around 1975 or 1976, when either Lenore or somebody for her submitted some poems to our journal. Um, which was called I.O. back then, and from which North Atlantic Books came. I had heard of her, and I liked the poem so much that I immediately got interested in doing a, a book of her poetry. Our press was only a year old at that point, and completely existed off of grants. So I think for about three or four years I wrote grant applications to do a collection of her poems, and they were all turned down. And in those days, if your grants got turned down, you didn't do the book. And it drifted out of attention for a very long time. Um, I guess 30-plus um, years it drifted out of attention. And then um, maybe about three years ago, we, our press having established itself less as a literary press, finally, and more as a just general trade publisher, we were wanting to put money back into literature. And we started a broader series based on the old journal, I.O., but part of it was particularly the I.O. Poetry series, which was to be inclusive of poets who are, were of Lindy, my co-publisher's generation and mine, and um, who in some way or other either participated in I.O. or shared the themes. And I generally thought that that meant that they were writers who had a psycho-spiritual element to them, a magical element. Um, it's something that's hard to name, but I think you know when they have it and you know when they don't. Um, our press started under the sponsorship of people like uh, Robert Duncan and Charles Olson and Edward Dorn and Robert Kelly. And Lenore, although she isn't directly associated with all those people, was very much under the the umbrella that, that includes them. Um, we started the series with two poets, um, Garrett Lansing and Ken Irby, and then I, I had the idea of, wow, I remember we were going to do Lenore's book like 35 years ago, we should do it now. And that's where the story dovetails with Evan's story, which is that he showed up from, uh, was it Savannah? Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia, very new in town and looking for something to do. And I, and I got the idea he was a poet, or might be a poet. or was... The verdict's still out on that one. Yeah. I, think. <laughs> I said, well, I've got a great idea. I said, there's this book I've been wanting to do for, like, so many years. And would you... I, and I, I called Lenore, and she had said, you know, I'm not in good health, I'm not really able to do this, I need help. And I said, well, I'll come over and help you. But then when Evan showed up, I kind of gave him the assignment. And maybe later he'll speak to that. But he, he established a connection with Lenore that lasted um, through the few years of the remainder of her life and really established the basis of the book. And then... Um, and then, after Lenore passed, um, Evan worked with um, with the very with with Vicky and the other people who were associated with um, um, with Lenore's um, who knew Lenore's work, were able to go and collect it and put it together, which took quite a quite a period of time. It took a couple of years to to get it done, and then. Um, and then, I think you transcribed it, right? Mm -hmm. And Evan transcribed the book. So, other than giving that kind of newsy background, I don't have a lot to say, except that um, um, my admiration for Lenore's work, and, and especially for who she was as the person who did that work. There's something, I mean, many of us have a work, but what's special is the way the work and the life kind of dovetail. And, God, for her, that really, that really stands out. Um, um, I will, I will read the one, the one poem that she originally submitted to Io that hooked me on her, 
back in 1976. Other people will read other works. So I'll, my con I'll, as my contribution, read this one poem and then pass it back to, to Evan. Um, this poem is called Dead Billy. And I think people who knew Lenore know who that is. You're a long way gone from here, Billy. Body becoming earth and the rest of you farther than starlight. Messages across the green glaciers of interstellar drift. Death alters the reference points. When I think of you, I look beyond Orion. Maybe I see a tarot deck spinning through a magician's hands, or your smile rising in the bat nebula, somewhere beyond the bend of space. The tenderest memory I have of you is you completely nodded out clasping your baby in the total security of unfeigned love. You were a green flame of unacceptable truth, and you ring like a Zen bell, spiraling through infinity like you always knew the way home. Uh. <laughs>